story one. Jumped off a bridge into a river at midnight with my friends. No idea how deep it was. Looking back, it was dumb as hell, but we thought we were invincible. Story two. I convinced all of my teachers I was allergic to chalk, so I never had to go up to the board in front of the class. My mom revealed the truth at open house my senior year. Story three. Went joyriding in a friend's car without a license. Blasting music like we were in a movie. Barely made it home without getting caught. And I still don't know how we didn't crash. Story 4. When I was 16, I worked at a gas station and convenience store. It was within walking distance of my house, so I would get off at midnight and walk home. On my way home, I always walked past a daycare. One night, I decided to hop the playground fence in the back. I checked the back door, and it was unlocked. I walked inside and immediately noticed the keys for the daycare bus. I started it up and drove to my friend's house and woke him up. We were hungry, so we went to Denny's. When we left, a couple of police cars passed us, and we realized it wasn't a good idea to be driving a daycare bus at 2 a.m. We went to another friend's house, someone we always picked on, and parked the bus in his driveway and walked home. His dad never figured out how a stolen bus wound up in his driveway. That was in 1982. Fast forward to 2023, and my wife and I were visiting my old hometown. I stopped at the daycare and apologized to the manager for stealing the bus. She laughed and had no idea what I was talking about but did forgive me. Story 5. In my early 20s, after a bad breakup, I went on holiday to Rome with a friend. She left a couple of days later. I wandered the streets of Rome, found a free concert, and met an attractive guy. We spent the night walking around Rome, and he kissed the senses out of me. Three days later, at the end of the holiday, I flew back home. He came with me. I refused to go back to living with my parents without him. We never dated and went straight to living together with him. After 26 years, we are still together. Story 6. I stole a car from my parents and drove around the neighborhood in it until the police stopped me. Then I had to go to court and explain my actions. The worst thing is that after that, I did it two more times and was caught by the same police officer all three times. He laughed at me a lot for being caught by him every time. Story 7. My best friend and I met up with some wannabe thugs from Facebook we thought were so cute at a golden corral, who were also way too old to be talking to teenagers. I do not know how we did not get kidnapped. It was so stupid. Story 8. Dyed my hair neon green the night before my high school graduation just because I wanted to stand out. My parents were furious, but it looked awesome in photos. Story 9. I spent my teenage years trying to be a good, obedient kid since my brother was already causing issues, so I never did anything too crazy. The craziest thing I did was probably one fall weekend in junior year. I told my mom that I was going to pick up some stuff for school, but in reality, I was going for a bike ride with friends. My mom didn't want me to hang out with them because she claimed that they would take me to do hard drugs and commit crimes. They were nowhere near the kind of people who would do that. My mom just wanted to make sure I was socially isolated so I could focus solely on studying. I had to borrow a spare bike from a friend since I couldn't take my own because my mom would have known I was going for a bike ride if I took my own bike. So, I headed over to my friend's place first. We had a nice bike ride that lasted a few hours and then we decided to grab dinner before we went home. My mom was starting to blow up my phone at that point with constant call attempts, so I had to turn my phone off for the duration of the dinner, and I kept it off until I had returned my friend's bike and was walking home. Once I turned my phone on, I got another call from my mom, and before she could fully start screaming at me, I made up an excuse saying I had been stuck in the subway for three hours, and she had to believe it because she didn't know how to verify that information. I don't have many good memories of high school, that one fall Saturday in junior year is one of the very few I have. Story 10. Went clubbing in Tijuana. I am a woman. My two guy friends got arrested, and I walked back to the border in the middle of the night. Took me five hours. It was difficult in heels. Story 11. When I was 16, I was walking to a friend's house for a ditching party. A gathering during school hours when we were supposed to be in school. When I was about a block away, some of my friends pulled up in my friend's car, a two-seater, and it was full with five people. I asked him for a ride to the house and told him I would sit on the hood. 
I did, and he was trying to be funny and started going fast, about 30 to 40 miles per hour. I started slipping off the hood, and I remember thinking either I launch myself off the car or I'm going to go under the tires. I jumped off the car. My legs got swept out from under me. My face slammed into the pavement doing a cartwheel with no hands, only my face, and I flipped many times before coming to and lifting my head up from the pavement. Blood was just pouring onto the pavement and my forearms. I could see the bone on one of my wrists, road rash all over. I had a piece of my forehead flapping over my right eye. My lip felt like a big sausage. I got road rash on both my knees, both my shoulders, one of my feet, and all over my forearms and hands. The recovery from road rash is absolutely brutal. I had post-traumatic stress disorder for a good year or two after that. Every time I would close my eyes to get to bed, I would see the fast-moving pavement under my feet, and I would jump out of bed wide awake. Never get on moving cars. Kids. Story 12. I climbed a 900-foot television antenna with a friend. We were spotted at about 100 feet, climbed down, jumped down, and ran. We were chased by security and two helicopters. Or maybe the time the bomb squad and arson investigators were called for us setting off pipe bombs in a field. I got to watch a demolition specialist detonate my bomb, similar to something from a movie. The police officer in the front seat where I'm handcuffed said, That was cool. Story 13. Trying to win my ex-girlfriend back. I brought her two packs of cigarettes. This was the 90s. I didn't smoke, never smoked, but she started experimenting with smoking. I made an exchange for the cigarettes in the boys' bathroom. The next Pablo Escobar. She didn't take me back. Story 14. Cut school in middle school. Knew we were going to get caught, so we joined a protest against knights in Satan's service and got ourselves on the news so our Jesus freak parents saw. They were so proud of us. Story 15. I stole a lot of drugs from different pharmacies, probably way past $10,000 in product at the time. They didn't catch me until I had my one truly bad day. I ignored all my intuition and made several mistakes. I was arrested at 14. They made their laws stricter after that on where they kept certain drugs in the store. Story 16. Nude aerobics on stage at a festival in front of thousands of people. The day before my 18th birthday. I wasn't allowed to drink there because I wasn't 18 yet, but naked on stage in front of thousands? Sure. Story 17, we played leap of faith around a blind turn in our town. Basically, you floor it and turn left without looking. And obviously yell, leap of faith. I don't know that teenagers should drive cars. Story 18, flipped about a half pound of cannabis per week on average back in senior year of high school. Would drive into the neighborhood during lunchtime pick up around $1,500 worth of cannabis and then sell it to friends and schoolmates for about twice as much. Solid $1,000 profit every week, tax-free. Was absolutely loaded for a high schooler after a few months of that. No issues until the very last day of senior year. A buddy passed out from smoking laced weed, not from me, which caused the school to do a major crackdown. One by one, they interrogated all the kids and almost everybody said my name. The teachers finally brought me in last and called me the kingpin of the whole operation. I called my parents shortly before, so they arrived around the same time the teachers brought me in for questioning. My parents knew I had been doing it but didn't really see much issue since it was just cannabis. We were totally honest with the school about everything. I didn't try to cover anything up or lie, and amazingly, because of that, they let me go. From the words of the dean himself, we had previously discussed potential punishments, and the severity was primarily based on if you were truthful or not. And because you were honest and a good a student, we are going to let this slide. They didn't let the kid who passed out walk during graduation, but they let me walk. Kind of funny to think about the whole thing. Really a great example of the truth will set you free. Story 19. I went water skiing and completely ignored sunscreen on my very fair skin. I paid for that one. I also skipped school one day and got ratted out by my best friend, who was worried about where I was. Neither of these things have happened in my adult life. I was a good kid because that's as crazy as it got. I was so busy working, doing my homework, and participating in multiple choirs and smaller vocal ensembles that I didn't have time to get in trouble. Story 20. Took my grandpa's 50th anniversary edition Chevrolet Corvette out on a joyride, 
picked up friends, smoked weed, and came home like nothing happened. We have cameras on the farm now. Story 21. I don't know if it was the craziest, but when I was 13, my brother, my cousin, and my best friend played basketball naked in our driveway under a floodlight until my mom caught us. Story 22. So I have posted this before, but here is one of the dumbest things my friends and I did as teenagers, and I still stand by what I said at the end, we should have gotten an adult involved. Any teenagers reading this, if you ever find yourself in the situation below, get an adult. Don't worry about how much trouble you could potentially get into. I was 16 at the time and spent the night at a friend's house. There were supposed to be four of us there that night, but there were only three. We were covering for our fourth friend, who decided to spend the weekend with her boyfriend, some sleazy 25-year-old. We were hanging out, listening to music. It was almost midnight when the phone rang. It was our fourth friend. She and her boyfriend had gotten into a fight, and he kicked her out of his house. She was calling from a payphone because he kept her cell phone. We thought, that sucks. Tell us where you are, and we'll come grab you. She was in Baltimore, Maryland. My first reaction was that we should get my dad. This was some serious situation, and we needed an adult. The other two freaked out and pointed out how much trouble we would all be in if a parent got involved. I pointed out how much trouble she was currently in. Alone, no phone, on the streets of a big city at midnight, over 200 miles from home. I argued that we really should get help. They used my argument against me, saying that she could be in serious trouble and we were wasting time arguing. So we printed off directions, loaded into my beat-up car, and off we went. Before this, the biggest city I had ever driven in was Charlottesville. We made the two or so hour trip, arriving in this big city in another state at 2.30 in the morning with absolutely no one knowing where we were. We pulled up to the store our friend called from, and she wasn't there. We asked the guy in the store, and he said she had argued with some guy for a bit, and when the clerk threatened to call the cops, she left with the dude she was arguing with. We drove around a bit, hoping she was somewhere nearby since the store was clearly within walking distance. One friend had the idea that if she left with the guy, it had to be the boyfriend, so she probably got her phone back. We called, and yeah, she was with him. Everything was good. She meant to call us, but they were talking, and he was apologizing, trying to make up with her. We told her that we were in the city, worried and scared that something bad would happen to her, so we came up. She said we blew things out of proportion and asked which parent we dragged up there for nothing. We told her we were there alone. Her tone changed. You guys are so sweet. You're the best friends a girl could ever have. I love you all. You should swing by and hang for a bit. Meet the boyfriend. We got directions from her and arrived, with the boyfriend acting nice, apologizing for the worry, saying he was glad she had such great friends. While he was being polite, we were creeped out. He invited us in, but we declined. He insisted, and we told him we might do it later, but we're thinking of going back to the store for a drink. We invited our friend to come along. The boyfriend tried to join too, but I said there wasn't room, and another friend pointed out that a cop was at the shop, and we didn't want to get pulled over since our parents didn't know we were there. The boyfriend agreed that the cops were tough, and our friend insisted on staying with him. We convinced her to ride with us so we wouldn't get lost. He told us to hurry back, inviting us to spend the night, saying we didn't want to drive home at this hour. We said it was a bad idea since our parents didn't know where we were. We pretended to agree to meet his friends after getting drinks. Once near the store, her attitude changed again. Apparently, there was a huge argument related to his creepy friends, and she didn't feel comfortable being alone with them. He put her out of the house, and when she called us, she was scared alone on the street. When he came looking for her, she left with him because it felt safer than the street. She was relieved when we called and looked for a way to talk to us alone. She wanted to go home and was worried when he offered us a place to stay. We ended up passing the store and heading home. The boyfriend started calling about 10 minutes later, asking what took so long. She lied, saying I was in the bathroom and since it was my car, they had to wait. Another 10 minutes passed and he called again, with her saying maybe a friend was sick. Eventually, he walked to the store and found out we weren't there, so we told her to turn off her phone. In the end, we made it home, 
stopping at our local 7-Eleven for slushies in case our friend's mom was up when we got in. During the ride home, we tried to convince our 15-year-old friend to break up with her 25-year-old boyfriend. She argued that she loved him and we didn't understand. We pointed out that he left her on the streets in Baltimore at midnight. She argued we didn't understand him and we pointed out that she called us scared because he was better than the street. She ended up dating the guy for a few more months, despite our protests. He eventually dumped her when he visited and tried to pressure her into sex. When she said no, he tried to force himself on her. She hit him, and he told her she wasn't worth the effort and he had other girls who would give him what he wanted. He said she meant nothing to him and she should either let him use her or kill herself because no one would love someone like her. That really messed her up for quite some time. Honestly, none of our parents ever found out that four teenage girls went out of state in the middle of the night. To this day, I still think we should have gotten a parent involved. We should have told her mom about the boyfriend as soon as we got home. But teenagers can make stupid decisions, and we were lucky things didn't go as badly as they could have.